Hi, I'm glad that you're viewing today because I want to address some questions that I get all the time concerning the body of Christ, concerning the church, the condition of the church, where is the church uh, going, uh, what is the future of the church, uh, the, the body of Christ, and I want to address some of those questions today in, in the message. And the title of the message is Through the Veil. Through the Veil. And my name is Sherry White. I'm coming to you from Fountain of Life Ministries International here in Athens, Georgia. We thank you for your support and your viewing, your prayers uh, for this ministry as we do the work of the Lord uh, in His kingdom. I'd like to start in Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, verse 19, it says, Having therefore, brethren, that's us, you and I, boldness to enter into the holiness, the holy place, by the blood of Jesus. You know, and as we go back to the, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, uh, we know that his blood was shed for the remission of our sins. Uh, we know that the stripes upon his back are for our healing. Hallelujah. We know that the crown of thorns are, uh, was put upon his head and the blood came forth out of his, out of his uh, scalp and his skull uh, for any mental illness uh, that we may encounter. Uh, Jesus Christ shed his blood for us and it gave us permission and liberty and freedom to come back into the place where God had first put man and woman, Adam and Eve. You know, it says that that in that garden, and if, can you just visualize the garden of Eden where Adam and Eve uh, had authority, they had power, uh, they... Uh, Adam named the animals and took care of the garden and and also there was such wonderful fellowship with the Father, with God Himself. God would come down in the cool of the evening and He would communicate with them. You know, and then something happened in the garden. Deception came into the garden. And that's when uh, the you know, the eating of the apple, and I don't want, that's not my message uh, today. What I want to answer is, where is the church and the body of Christ, and where are we going, and where should we be? And I think that's important for all of us uh, that are believers and children of God to know where we are and where we are going. And so Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was crucified that day. And then three days later, he rose up again, just like he said he was going to do. And he took, gathered up all of his blood, and he took it, and he put it upon the mercy seat. Just for you and I, hallelujah, for all of mankind, he put it on the mercy seat. And he became our mercy seat. And now the reason I'm, I'm, I'm going in this direction is, is that I want to tell you that we, you know, once we were out of the garden, after that uh, sin happened and and Adam and Eve um, fell to the temptation of the of the enemy, uh, then they were put outside of the garden, and and no longer did God come down in the cool of the evening and speak to them and fellowship with them and love on them. And praise God, Jesus Christ put us back into the garden. He put us back there in our place of authority and power and dominion. Uh, oh, that's so exciting to me because that is where the church needs to be. They need to take up their position of authority and power because Jesus Christ put us back into the garden. He gave us that avenue to communicate with God himself through the veil. The veil was torn. The veil was ripped. 
uh, when Jesus Christ, it says that the earth shook and the veil was rent. No longer do we have to tie a rope around us and, and wear veils on our skirts so that, so that if we fall dead, they could pull us out. That's what was happening in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant uh, that the priest would go in there um, once a year and put blood there, a sacrifice there for the people's sins. Well, this is what Jesus did for us on the cross. He was the perfect lamb. He was the perfect sacrifice for us. And when he died, the veil was rent, or the veil was torn, the veil was ripped, and gave us access, just like verse 19 says, that we can come boldly into the presence of Almighty God. And in Psalms, it says that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. He put us back into that garden where we can communicate with God, where we, we do not have to have an in-between uh, go between us to uh, speak to, to the Father because we can speak to the Father uh, at any time. Uh, I heard a minister say the other day that he's always on the line. He's always there. Isn't that great news? That God is always there and that we can communicate with him? Let's go there and read verse 20. By a new and living way. Now, there are some of the body of Christ want to go back to the Old Testament and pick up those Old Testament ways and bring them over into where we are right now, which is the season or the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said it's, it's expedient or profitable for you if I go away because the Holy Spirit will come come to, to you, will come and inhabit you and bring you comfort and bring you peace and will teach you all the truth and will help open up that way. We are living a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us or dedicated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh. You know, and we can go we can go beyond the veil because he loves us and he desires us and he wants us to come in and commune with him. He wants that. You know, as we, as we talk about where we are as a body of Christ, we are God's children and he is training us up in his ways, and they are the new and the living way. In verse 21 it says, And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from every evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast, the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Now, I'm going to stop right there because there, is, there are misconceptions and falsehoods about gathering together and assembling together. You know, it says for two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. I know I was at a prayer breakfast this week, and there were five women there. And the mighty power of God came into that room where we were uh, sitting and listening to the word of God and praying for one another. Uh, the presence of Almighty God was so strong. And I know that, that this assembling together is not just going on Sunday mornings to a particular building or location or Sunday nights or Wednesday nights or Tuesday nights. It is whenever we gather as believers and we are 
talking about Jesus and we are lifting up Jesus, then he comes into the midst of that meeting. I have been in the room with one other person and she and I, uh, she's an intercessor, I'm an intercessor, and we begin to pray and sing and praise the Lord and we begin to pray uh, in our prayer language and the presence of God and the glory of God has fallen where we are and we were both slain in the spirit. Uh, nobody touched us except the Holy Ghost. And when we... Uh, got up and came to ourselves. we heard the Spirit of the Lord saying to us, what is it that I can do for you? And we began to put our request before the Lord with thanksgiving, just like in Philippians. We made our request known before the Lord. You know, this says that we are to have our conscience our minds sprinkled with the blood of Jesus that no longer are we thinking the old ways, but we have embraced his new way, his new way of living. I have found a new way of living, and it's through the veil. We have to go through the veil and enter, to, and enter into that newness of life, a new way of living. You know, and then let's go over to uh, chapter 11. Well, let's go back to 38 of 10. Uh, this is where the body of Christ needs to be. Now the just, who is the just? Have you been justified? Yes, we have. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you've been justified. Now let the just live by faith but if any man draw back, my soul shall not have uh, any pleasure in him. And then we go into what ministers call the faith chapter, chapter 11. This is where the body of Christ needs to be moving. We need to be operating by faith because the world out there, the, the things in the world, the economy of the world, it's not doing very well. But we know that the economy of God's kingdom will never fail. It will be forever and ever and ever, and it's always increasing. The kingdom of God and the economy of God is always increasing. Whew, that makes me excited. Now, in verse 1 in, in chapter 11, it says, Now, faith is the substance or the proof of things hoped for, the evidence of things not visible. See, we cannot go by what we see with our natural eyes. If you are believing the Lord for your children to come to the Lord, or your grandchildren to come to the Lord, or you may be believing God for your healing, uh, for finances, for your business, uh, for a new position in the workplace. If, if you are believing God, then you cannot go by what your, your physical eyes, your natural eyes, are seeing. You have to see through the veil. You have to see through the Word of God. Ooh, can you say amen? I hear some people shouting out there. You ask me where the church is today and where we are going, and the church of the future is a church of faith, is a church of power, is a church of authority. That when we go into a situation and we speak out the word of God through the spirit of God, that the spirit has given us unction to speak and we speak it out, there is power there. And it will change any situation. It says 2, verse 2, By it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You know, that's what he did. He spoke and the stars went into the heavens. He spoke and the, the, the lakes and the rivers and the oceans came into being. He spoke and all of creation began to move as the Holy Spirit hovered over the earth. So, 
we see, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered up into God a more excellent sacrifice. And why was that? It was because it was a blood sacrifice. It was a blood sacrifice. Blood covers. There is life in the blood. And see, when Abel sacrificed and that blood came forth, oh, and it dropped upon the ground, that was his faith being poured out. And it pleased the Lord. His, his, his sacrifice pleased the Father. See, there's blood. There's life in the blood. And that's why they would sacrifice the animals and the priest would go into the Holy of Holies and he would sacrifice. And that's why Jesus Christ shed his blood. He was the perfect sacrifice because there's life in the blood. That's what it says in Leviticus. Then we, as we go on, then verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated. Now I love this. I love anything about translation. Anything about transporting from, from this place to that place. Because I know that if he did it for Philip in the book of Acts, he took him out of that, out of that uh, pond or lake where he was baptizing the eunuch and transported him or translated him uh, into another place that we can experience. And I know that some people have experienced that. That he should not see death. And was not found because God translated him. For there, for behold, but before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. The church needs to be pleasing the Father. We need to be seeking his face. We need to be seeking uh, his uh, uh, approval and his and embrace his love. You know, this is something that that I sense in my spirit that there is, you know, it says what, what the world needs now is love, love, love. You know, it's talking about another kind of love. But let me tell you something, that is true. They need to embrace the love of God because the love of God never fails. The love of God will make you into a new person. The love of God will take away those cigarettes. The love of God will heal your neck and back. The love of God will touch your, your innermost being and, and, and give you purpose and give you a destiny. Oh, that is so exciting. By faith. By faith. In verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe, and as we go through the veil, we must believe, we must have faith, that, oh, look at, look at, let's read on. For he that cometh to God, you know, through the veil, we're coming to the Father. He's made a way for us to come. And it says, must believe that he is. Do you believe that he is? You know, he said to Moses in the burning bush, I am. Do you believe that he is today? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all of these other things will be taken care of, will be provided. Do you need faith for your finances? It'll be there. Do you need faith for your, uh, your son to get off of drugs? It will be there. Do you need faith to... Uh, go out and start a new business, it will be there. Do you need faith for your healing, for your miracle that you need in your body, for a new liver? Uh, God is doing that right now. There is a person watching me that needs a new liver. You have cirrhosis of the liver, not because of alcohol, but because of uh, sickness and disease. The liver has become diseased, and God is giving you a new liver, right now, receive it in Jesus' name. Oh, glory. He is wonderful, isn't he? Let's go move on to verse 8. By faith Abraham, who is called the father of our faith, when he was called, 
to go out into a place which he should have received an inheritance, he obeyed. <laughs> when Abraham was told to get up, pack up, take his wife and children, his herdsmen and his, his cattle, and move to a place that God was going to tell him where to go, he obeyed. And he went out, not knowing where, where he was going. By faith, he journeyed into a land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. See, Abraham saw through the veil. He saw Jesus' day and rejoiced it, rejoiced in it. We have to go through the veil in order to be in the, in the very presence of Almighty God, the Father, our Father. We must go through the veil, and we get there by faith. By faith we believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Where is the church today? The church today is on a pinnacle. I see it. I see that God is yearning and desiring for his body to come through the veil, to commune with him. Where is the church going? It's going to go through the veil by faith and be in the presence of God and walk in the presence of God and talk to him in face to face. Jesus put us back into the garden to enjoy what God has done for us. He's mighty. He wants to be mighty in your life today. Thank you for watching.